I'm Matt. I'm Kerry. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. We were very excited when Smith and Forge Hard Cider challenged us to make Narzal from Lord of the Rings. Then they told us we could only use old school techniques. So we're using charcoal today. That's going to be different than the forced air propane that you normally see us use. In this case, we're using probably about 20 pounds per hour in charcoal. I'm using W1 tool steel from Aldo Bruno. As Kerry places the hot steel onto the anvil, Sam not only sets the pace, but also the placement for the striking for Illy and I. Sam removes the blade from the hot charcoal and goes to the anvil and refines the tip. Now that the blade shape is fully refined, Sam begins the beveling. He starts at the point and draws the bevels back towards the shoulder. Sam tends to make this look really easy, but even some of the most seasoned smiths struggle through this process. Stop! Hammer time! Our friends at Smith & Forge challenged us to do this build using only 19th century tools and techniques. They were generous enough to share this 19th century power hammer with us. This design was patented by Christopher Bradley in 1891. The way this hammer works is it has a spinning clutch. As soon as you engage the foot pedal, it engages everything else and it bounces on those leather springs. To remove excess material, we hot cut the tang to length. Sam leads as Ilya strikes to bring the tang to its final length. After nailing the blade to a 2x4, I use an age-old draw filing technique to start defining the bevels on the blade. If you have no power tools, you still don't have an excuse. To create the fuller down the center of the blade, I'm going to be using a hand scraper. You can see as we use the scraper, it generates so much friction that the little chips come off actually are smoking. So after using the scraper that Ilya made to rough in the fuller, I've now moved on to using a file. Keeping the heat on the blade even is not always the easiest thing to do on a charcoal forge. Once the sword has reached temperature, Ilya pulls it from the charcoal forge and quenches it in heat treating oil. I'm getting ready to cut the stock for the guard for Narsil. Normally I would use the bandsaw, but since we are stuck using 19th century tools, I'll be using the hacksaw. Using a spring swage on the power hammer, Sam captures the metal on either side of the central portion of the cross guard. This is a central process to leave enough metal to become our pointy coin block on the hill. Now that we've done most of the rough work on the power hammer, we're going to move to the hand hammer. After drawing out the tines, Sam uses the horn of the anvil to finish the finials on our guard. I can't exactly use my beloved grinders, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the guard using a trusty Nicholson file. Probably be at this for several hours. Done about maybe 10% of the guard. We're about an hour in. Got a long way to go, but we'll get there. To create the triangular holes in the ends of the finials for the guard, Sam made a special tool that will allow him to punch that shape that we're looking for. Using a radius file, Matt defines the facets on the quillium block of the guard. And once I get my shape refined, I'll go in with sanding sticks and make it pretty, polish it out. Using the spring swage on the screw press, Sam and I capture the metal to draw out the neck of the pommel. Sam places the pommel blank onto the horn of the anvil while Ilya strikes, refining that much needed arc at the end of the pommel. Using a triangular punch, Sam puts a hole through the pommel. I use a file to clean up the perimeter of the pommel. I have to keep doing this not only to clean the surface, but I also gotta wait until the radius in here matches this radius. Now I gotta start the sculpting. Peter Lyon, the actual guy who makes these swords for The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings movies. I use a lot of different sized contact wheels and a lot of different grinders. So doing this by hand, it's gonna be quite a task. After heating the base of the neck of the pommel, Sam upsets it, giving us a nice transition into the handle. The punching on this pommel is both off-center slightly and not quite the final form that we need. I'm gonna do all of this with hand files to get it to the proper shape. Once I've got exactly the form that I want, I'm going to take this and I'm going to hand it off to Ilya for the engraving. Using chisels that he made himself, Ilya engraves the pommel.
We got our basic parts all forged and cleaned up. We'll go ahead and do a rough assembly of the parts. The tangle gets shortened. We'll fasten our pommel. Can't wait to go to the demos and hunt ourselves some Orokai. So maybe we were leading you guys on just a little bit with that. But we've been looking for the right opportunity to show you what would happen if you don't temper your blades after heat treat. And this is it. We broke the shards of the sword into even smaller pieces. In the movie, the sword is reforged like this. The shards are attached. That is no way to reforge a broken sword. You don't get a solid construction like that. The best way to reforge it is the traditional Japanese tile stacking technique because that way all the tiles come in contact with each other fully and the sword is drawn out. This is how the sword will be whole again. After bringing all the broken pieces of the sword up to temperature, we take it over the anvil and re-weld it. We're going to be folding the shards several times and doing more welding. We'll need to do this to make it one solid, clean piece again. Now that we've reforged this blade to form, Sam, for a second time, begins beveling the blades by hand. This blade being so much longer than our forge, Ilya carefully moves the blade in and out to get it even heat. Using the heat from the charcoal fire, Ilya tempers this sword He's watching for the color change down the blade. Straw is the color we're typically looking for. It's okay if you see the center go up into a light plum, but we're trying to stay away from any blues. Now that we got the blade reheat treated and tempered this time, it's time for me to begin filing all over again. Using a handsaw, Sam cuts down wood so that we can begin to carve this handle. Using a chisel, Sam cuts away the area where the tang has to go. Keeping up with the challenge, I'm going to use the method called etching. Etching works by applying resist to clean polished metal and then submerging it in acid with the purpose of eating away the unprotected surface. Now with the resist in place, Matt moves the blade to the etching. Now that we have the guard and pommel attached to the blade, we lay on the sandwich pieces of wood for the wood handle and cover it in leather. Very bright was that sword when it was made whole again. The light of the sun shone redly in it, and the light of the moon shone cold, and its edge was hard and keen. And Aragorn gave it a new name and called it Andurl, Flame of the West. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.